Hey, hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a Q&A for you. Um, thank you so much to those of you who submitted questions here on YouTube as well as on my Instagram. Um, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all of you subscribing and following along and just cheering me up with all of your super nice comments um, on all of our videos. And I love chatting with you on Instagram too, so be sure to follow me there and we can connect as well on there. So I'm just gonna jump right into the questions. I didn't um, write down who asked the question because I didn't know if you guys wanted me to like say who asked the question. Um, so let me know if you like that and I can do it in a future Q&A. Um, but also a lot of these questions were asked by multiple people. So um, yeah, so they were just like frequently asked questions that I put in here. So. Let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first question I have down is, are you planning to stay at home or are you going to work your entire pregnancy? So for those of you who might be new here, I am 18 weeks pregnant and um, yes, I plan on working my entire pregnancy. Um, I have always um, enjoyed work and will continue to work um, postpartum as well. Okay, the next question is, what do you do to stay as stress-free as possible? Um, so I definitely think that yoga and exercise have been probably top of my list um, for helping me stay stress-free. Um, I wouldn't say I'm stress-free, but um, they help reduce my stress a lot. I also think that diet... Um, plays into like stress levels and stuff. Um, I think if you have a, if you're not eating a good diet, then that can cause stress. Um, and yeah, I just try to make sure that I'm doing one thing for myself every day. Like whether that's just watching, you know, some mindless TV or YouTube or whatever, <laughs> um, just to like decompress. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely exercise or like getting outside moving, um, is definitely what I like make an effort to do every day because it's what I've noticed has helped keep me stress free. <laughs> and that question was actually asked by Eric on my YouTube post on my community top here. So thanks honey. For those of you who don't know, Eric is my husband. Okay, the next question is, are you doing any form of exercise um, after you got pregnant? Like since you got pregnant, I guess. And yes, I am. I did a morning routine video a couple months back and it showed um, just my morning routine, obviously. But within that, I did um, like a little 15 minute yoga workout. And I do that basically every day. Well, it's a little different every day, but I try to do 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes even an hour of yoga every single day. Um, and then go on a walk or something. But um, that's like the minimum of what I do every day. And then um, I like to jog still, but I take it really easy. I jog really slow. I sometimes even walk. Sometimes I'll jog a little bit quicker if I'm feeling really good. Um, and then I love to do high fitness. I've talked about that a lot on Instagram. Um, as well as on here, I think. Um, and then I lift weights um, and do like some strength training stuff. Nothing like too hardcore. <laughs> it's just very minimal like weightlifting and nothing that feels like <clears throat> too heavy. Like I keep it really, um, keep it pretty light. So I am definitely still exercising in those. I would say I love to, I love to exercise. So those are the exercises I do, but I'm really like open to any kind of exercise. I just like to get moving and, you know, like get the blood flowing in my body. Also, I feel like um, in the first trimester, the days that I would exercise, um, I noticed a big difference in my energy levels and how nauseous I would get. So I was very religious in the first trimester with exercise. I actually feel like since my nausea and tiredness has gone down, I feel like I've been lazier with exercise this second trimester. Or so, but I do want to still continue to exercise and not lose any um, strength because, and I also want to be ready for 
like labor and stuff. I feel like if you're working out and stuff, you're um, more ready for labor, I would think, I hope. So yeah, those are the types of exercises that I have been doing. Do you have any recommendations on how to help with nausea slash queasiness during the first trimester? Um, I, I mean, I just mentioned exercise, but oh man, guys, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. Like, eat as much as you can, like con constantly throughout the day. Not as much as you can, but as often as you can throughout the day. That helps. Go to bed early, because then you have to, don't have to deal with nausea as much. <laughs> um, I don't know, just know that like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And for those of you who your nausea lasts like your whole pregnancy, I'm so sorry. Ugh. Um, talk to your doctor about um, any possible medications you might be able to take, because they're to like they have really good safe ones. I didn't use any like prescription medications because they were so expensive and we were just so over paying for medications after doing IVF. Um, but I took Unison at night and that really helped me sleep, get a good like night's rest. Um, if I didn't take Unisom, I would wake up in the middle of the night and have to eat crackers or something. Uh, I don't know. I wish I had more like remedies or things to help with your nausea, but it's just, I don't know if there's much that can be done other than like an actual medication. <laughs> I know that does help, um, a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, but I did say exercise helped me and same with um, drinking a lot of water, like sipping on ice cold water throughout the day helped a lot. Yeah. So just know that you're not the only one that suffered it and you can make it through. But I'm, and know that I'm sorry because if you're dealing with that, it sucks. It just, it sucks. So just the, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You can do it. You can make it through. Um, Good luck. So next question is, what is your favorite thing about being pregnant? Um, I don't know. Just the fact that I am pregnant because <laughs> it took so dang long to get here. Um, and just knowing that my body was able to do this is like, well, my stomach just growled. Um, I don't know. Just just the fact that I'm pregnant, I don't know, is like the best part about being pregnant because there have been a lot of annoying parts. Um, I mean, I don't want to complain, but yeah, there have been some, I could probably list a lot of hard parts about being pregnant, but my favorite part, I don't know. I'm just so happy to be pregnant. Like the fact that I could be pregnant is what's so awesome about it. Uh, I like looking down and just like seeing my bump and being like, that's me. Like I have a bump. I don't know. The bump is kind of fun. Like I actually like when people touch my bump. It's like, I don't know. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I just, maybe it's just because it's a reminder that I am pregnant. And like I said, I'm just happy that I'm actually pregnant. I like thinking about the baby too, like in there. Like that's really cool. And imagining what she's like and stuff. But yeah. So I guess my favorite thing about being pregnant is just the fact that I'm pregnant. Have you thought about your birth plan yet? Yes, and my birth plan is to go to the hospital and get as many drugs as I possibly can to make this labor and delivery as comfortable and easy as it can possibly be. I mean, I I don't know. I don't really have a birth plan, to be honest. I just am kind of putting it into my doctor's hands and the nurses, and I'm just trusting that they'll take care of me, and I do want an epidural. I do want medication like to help me through it because I get so freaked out by pain and especially with myself. Like I will put, if I'm in so much pain, I will just like go into shock. Um, I just don't do well with it. And I want this birth to be as enjoyable as possible. Um, I think I am going to take some classes or, you know, whatever, like the hospital provides. Um, and do some research. I don't want to go in completely blind, but I am just going to go in with um, an open mind that anything can happen, um, but that I trust that, you know, the doctors and nurses have done this a time or two and they will take care of me 
and help me feel as comfortable as possible. Okay, I like this question, it's really cute. It's, what do you love most about Eric? And if we're not talking physical, because <laughs> there are some physical things I really love about him, but no, if we're talking um, just, you know, personality and just who he is and stuff, um, the thing I love the most about Eric is how friendly he is and how he just goes with the flow and is so like welcoming and such a great host. Like when people come over to our house and we have a lot of like my family that comes over to our house that just like, they're my family, they're like my friends. We're all really close and they'll just show up and he's always so like kind and like he's such a good host. He always wants to make sure people feel comfortable at our house and um, he's always like wanting to make them food and I don't know, he's just super friendly. And I never feel like I have to like hold his hand or, you know, like make sure he's okay when we're at a party. He's just, yeah, friendly. I love that about him and just a great host. Super easy guy to be around. So that's what I love about him. I think that was like three or four different things, but you know, all encompassing, like he's just a great guy to be around. He's super fun, easy going friendly person to be around. And I love that about him. This next question is, did you ever get to a point in your infertility and feel like it was just never going to happen? Yes. I felt like that all the time. Like I would, I felt like that more than I felt like it could happen, if that makes sense. So it's hard. Like when all you see is negative pregnancy tests, why, why would you you know, believe that you're going to see a positive one. It's just so hard to see that um, and be hopeful about it. But luckily, Eric was always very hopeful that it could happen to us. And once we did IVF, I was a lot more hopeful because, like, the chance of conceiving with IVF is so much higher than with, like, IUI and, you know, other fertility treatments. So, yeah, I definitely had those moments. It sucks. And if you guys feel like that, I feel for you because it's really hard to get out of that. And for those of you who've done IVF and it hasn't worked, and you're still waiting, like, I can't even imagine. That's just, ugh, it's just awful. So you just have to tell yourself, you just have to even, like, lie to yourself that, you know, like, you believe. Even if you don't really believe it, you have to, like, tell yourself, like, this can happen to me. If it can happen to her, it can happen to me. You know, if it can happen to them, if they can get pregnant, then I can get pregnant because you just have to hold on to that hope. Otherwise, I don't know, it gets pretty depressing. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely have felt like that. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have the best advice for that, I guess, but I would just say, yeah, just hold on to that little glimmer of hope. Like for me, I had like the smallest little glimmer sometimes. You just really have to believe that it can happen to you one day. All right, this next question is, are you going to film your labor and birth? Yes. Um, I'm not sure how we're gonna do it. I'm not sure if like Eric and I will just kind of vlog it or if I'll have like hire somebody to like create a birth video for us. I've always thought that would be kind of cool. Um, we'll see as time gets closer, but definitely, I definitely want to film, excuse me, I definitely want to film the labor and delivery. So, do you have a name picked out? Yes and no. <laughs> we have like three or four names picked out. Um, we're not completely settled on one yet, but we have one in particular that we, especially Eric, <laughs> keep on like you know, kind of using and playing with. Um, if it were up to Eric, that would be the name and it would be settled. But I really want to wait until we actually meet our daughter to name her. So yeah, so we're not going to do any like name reveal videos or like announcements. She'll get her name. We'll decide on it once we see her, once we meet her. So yeah. And I think that, like, that gives us, I like doing doing it that way because I feel like 
what if a week before or even the day before we hear a name that we're just like, yes, that's it. And then we see her and, you know, that will really confirm what name we want to give her. So, yeah. Don't have a name set yet. Okay, this next question is, how far apart do you want to have your babies? Uh, I have no idea. I used, I go back and forth. Sometimes I think it would be fun to have them. Well, I used to think it'd be fun to have babies like really close together for their sake. But I don't know if I could handle that. And since pregnancy has been a little bit harder than I anticipated, I don't know. I just kind of want to give my body a break. And maybe it's because of all the IVF stuff we've done. I just feel like my body's been through a lot this year. So if we need to use IVF to get pregnant again, then I probably want to give myself a little bit of a break. Um, I don't know. We'll just go with the flow. Honestly, we haven't really talked too much about it. Um, because we're just going, like, we're just happy to be pregnant right now. If that makes sense. We're just living in the moment right now. We'll see what the future brings. Next question is, do you think you would try without IVF for a bit to see if you can get pregnant on your own before doing it again? Yeah, I think so. Um, I know so many people that do IVF and then they end up getting pregnant on their own. We have undiagnosed infertility, so I would like to think that we could get pregnant on our own still. Um, yeah, so I think we'd probably try for a few months. Um, it just kind of depends on how, like our future plays out but I think we would try for a few months and then and then go and meet with our fertility doctor and probably get a frozen embryo transfer going because we have two more embryos left so we can definitely do a couple more transfers all right you guys that's it for this Q&A thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video bye Thank you.